Hello there. I ask our community what you would like to see next. A CSS or JavaScript project? Well, the vast majority choose JS. So in this episode, we are going to build a scroll animation, which is pretty easy. However, it's very useful. You might see these websites where you start scrolling in parts of the site, you know, images or sections of the website start to come in. In our case, I just create these content blocks. You can replace it with any content you want. If I scroll it, as you can see, one comes from the right and the other one from the left. We're gonna use CSS to make the animation and JS to tell where the trigger point is for the next box to come in. I think it's really useful. You can use that in a lot of different websites. So that's it. Let's get into it. All right, Dev, let's start really from scratch. Let's create our file structure, okay, our markup is style.css and of course our apple.js okay let's close this for now we don't need it right now okay so let's create our boilerplate exclamation tab and you have it going to the title let's say is scroll animation okay we need also a pink connect our css to our markup and below that we need another one a script point to external javascript file okay Let's use defer, so this is going to be loading after load the page, okay? Let's move here to the body and let's get started, okay, with our markup. All right, and now we want to have a H1 here in the body, say scroll to see the animation, okay? You have to scroll, all right? And below that one, we need a couple of boxes. The box are going to have two uh, classes, the class of box and also a color. And inside this one, let's have a H2. In our case, let's say just content. You can have whatever you want, okay? Image is up to you, okay? Let's duplicate this one. And here, this one is going to be ready. This one yellow. And the load one green, okay? So you have four boxes. Let me just duplicate this two more times. So you have 12 boxes. Then I can show you the animation. Okay, let's see what you have so far. Looks like we have an ugly list of contents. Okay. And now we're in the realm of CSS where part of the magic happens. Okay, so let's apply the same style to our list. First, let's start change the font. Let's go to the Google fonts and pick the poppings. Let's copy this one and paste here. As you can see, nothing happens because we just copy and paste. Okay, we are not using that yet. All right. Let's have here our universal selector. Box size, we want that to be about the box. All right. Make it easy. We want to go to from top to bottom. Okay, now we have also those colors. Don't worry. Okay, there is a link down below. You can download this one. Okay. And let's grab the body here now okay and let's put this content right in the middle and give it the colors okay so the background color here let's pick a grayish color like 636 e72 font family now we are going to use the poppins that we got from google fonts okay so roboto and uh, as a fullback plan let's say sunset okay if for some reason, they're not able to load the robot. All right, the layout here is going to be flex. It put things side by side horizontally. We don't want that, so you have to fix that with flex direction column. Now they're again on the top of each other, but they are not in the middle of the page. So you just find content center along the main axis and the line height is center along the cross axis. And as you can see, this is right in the middle. Let's also get you rid of N margin, okay? Give you as a thumbs up, it's for free. It helps the channel and it also helps YouTube to send it to more people like you that are learning web development, okay? Thank you. And H1, the color here is going to be RGB 226, 226, and 226, OK? 
okay. I should say 226 three times, but it's okay. Text first form Umber case, as you can see, much better. And let's give a match of 30 pixels all the way around. And looks like we also need here a text shadow. Okay, two pixels, two pixels offset, 10 pixels blur. And for the color here, let's say black. Okay, and it looks beautiful. We did the body, the H1, and now the box. Okay, the background color. As you saw, available. There is a link down below. You can download this one. All right. And for the font here, it's gonna be white. We also want to have here a layout of flex, align in the center along the cross axis, and along the main axis, just find content center. Let's give it a size, a width of 400 pixels, and the height of 200 pixels. And as you can see, we need some space in between them. See? So let's give a margin of... I'm gonna give a margin of 10 pixels, okay? You can work with you, your own numbers, okay? Body radius, let's say 20 pixels. Make the corners a little bit round. Let's apply some box shadow here. It's gonna be 2 pixels. 3 pixels of, uh, not 3, let's say 4 pixels offset and for the blur, 5 pixels let's have the color here, it's gonna be black and uh, transparency 0 0.3 and they are much better now, alright transform, translate, let's move the they are 0 for default but let's push them to the right. Okay, let's say 100%. They go to a little bit to the right. But in big screens, we need more than that. We need, for example, let's say 400 pixels. Uh, 400%. 400 okay, not pixel percent. And yeah, now it's off of the screen. We also need a transition, okay, on the transform dot for seconds and easy all right and believe me i know what you're thinking how are you gonna put them back let's use the the class show okay transform it translate let's bring it back okay to zero is the default and right now we're gonna put the, the show class here manually but we're gonna use javascript to do that okay so we're gonna use CSS and JavaScript to show all the box, okay? And in that beautiful sequence, one for the right, another one for the left. Now let's get rid of this ugly uh, scroll bar, okay? With overflow X, let's say hidden. And yeah, you cannot see that anymore. And another problem we have to solve is how one box is coming from the left and the other one from from the right, okay. So let's do it right now. Let's solve this problem. Box nth of type even. The ones that are even are coming from the left, and the ones that are odd are coming from the right. Okay. So let's copy this one, this line of code, and let's say minus forty percent. Okay, four hundred percent. I know, I know. I'm looking at my screen right now and this content text, the H2, is really very ugly. Let's change that, okay? So the font size here, let's say 45 pixels, is a little better now. Let's also apply some text shadow. Two pixels of offset, three pixels blur, and the color black, yeah, it's nice. Finally, in the realm of the JavaScript, okay, where the magic happens, uh, let's get our boxes, okay? So, document query select all the boxes, okay? And let's save them into variables called boxes. So, we have const boxes, and we have all the boxes in it, okay? The second thing here, let's add a event list that's gonna happen when scroll. And when this school happens, this is gonna fire up our checkboxes function, okay? 
create now the checkbox function okay so functions checkbox and here let's use the windows dot inner height okay the inner height it takes the height viewport in pixels of our window okay let me log that to the console so you can see it oops looks like i forgot to invoke the function let me do it here paste in the yeah now you can see we have the number uh 14 586 and is increasing okay so we we have a way of measuring it okay so let's divide that right now for five and multiply for four and we have that number eight pixels that you can use as a trigger in order to be able to tell when you will want our box to come in so let's save that in a variable let's call that trigger button and yeah nice now we can use that in our if statement okay now let's loop it through it okay let's grab the boxes for each box you can call whatever you want let's have a callback function okay and here let's have a, a variable let's call that box top okay let's set that equals to the box whatever box we are talking about here and let's have a dot get body client rect okay and this is going to give us information about the size and its position in the viewport and you care just about the top okay now that you have the trigger bottom and also the box top you are ready to have the magic done okay if the box top is less than the trigger bottom we want to grab that box or whatever box we are in class list add let's add the class show remember that one that show the boxes and yeah as you can see on the left you can already see the boxes and else okay what you want to do when i grab the box class list and we want to remove okay the class show all right so it's quite simple okay there is some new stuff in here i know but as you can see it's simple and it's working nice so that's it for this week guys i really hope you like it if you like it thumbs up okay and subscribe so you get more content like this one bye bye and i'll see you in the next one